Since the last murder, what has admitted to killing his partner, Miss Howe, that is, he has pleaded guilty to manslaughter. The court also heard Booth's account of the moment Miss Howe returned to a flat which had been smashed up and how a fight began which ultimately ended in tragedy. Booth claims Miss Howe was the one who started being violent by kicking him in the testicles. Charlie Booth will now take the stand for the prosecution to cross-examine. <laughs> Booth, before July 24th last year, how many times did you hit Lauren Howe over the years? I don't know an exact number, but I'd hit her. Countless times? I suppose you could say that, yeah. Where on her body had you hit her before? I slapped her around the face. I'd hit her in the stomach area before. Anywhere else? Hard to say. Had she ever gone to court and given evidence against you? No. Had she ever, before July 24th, been seriously hurt because of your violence? No. On the morning of July 24th, was it different? No. Think about it, Charlie Booth, and be as honest as you can be. On the morning on July 24th, did you hit Lauren Howe harder than you'd ever hit her before? No. You didn't? Would you like to think about that? No. Had you ever put her in hospital? No. I just threw a punch. I didn't think. I didn't gauge how hard I hit her before on that occasion, or any other occasion. It wasn't an accident, was it? Whatever it was, it was deliberate. Do you agree? No. You deliberately aimed for her tummy? No, I just threw a punch. I didn't think. You must have hit her harder than you'd ever, ever hit her before. I can't say. To me, it was no different to any other fight apart from the consequences of the punch. You know, it wasn't unusual for us to fight like that. This level of violence you see, Charlie Booth, was unusual. Because otherwise she'd have died before, wouldn't she? No. But the reason you hit her so hard was that morning you were more angry with her than you had ever, ever been before. That's not true. Evidence of Dr. Kirstine Hope mentioned. Not a push, not bumping into a desk, not tripping over her shoelaces, a very, very heavy impact. That's what she said, yes. I didn't think about it, I just threw a punch. I didn't think about how hard I threw it or how soft I did it. Can you show us what you did? I just punched her in the stomach. Charlie Booth demonstrated. Charlie Booth said he's right-handed and used his left hand when punching. Is that your best attempt at recreating how you hit her? Charlie Booth saying now he swung back, showed us this. As hard as that? No, not as hard as that. Show us what you did. Shows again. Do you not want to show how hard you hit her? It's a bit hard to reconstruct how hard I hit her. So your arm, back as far, back as it would go, given the wall, then you aimed and punched at her. I didn't aim a punch, I just hit her tummy. I didn't think about the punch itself, it just happened. Just one of those things. She reacted like she'd been winded and put her hands on top of her legs. See, that punch split her liver open and there was catastrophic blood loss inside her. Did she cry out in pain? No, she looked like she'd winded. Within a couple of seconds, I'd walked off onto the balcony. Was there any expression of pain? Not that I can remember. One of her major organs had just been split open. She just gasped, then I walked off onto the balcony at that stage. Was she very obviously in agony? I didn't assess her. So this argument had come to a rather sudden end? Yeah. Did she mention the state of the flat again? No. Did you ask her if she was okay? You could tell she was unwell. Did you ask if she was okay? Of course I did, yeah. We've not seen that anywhere. It was immediately after your punch. Yeah. Did you say sorry? No, I didn't know a punch had caused such a horrible injury. I didn't know what was happening. Thinking about it, hitting her as hard as you did in that way, you must have intended to hurt her badly. No, I didn't think. Or to kill her. No. Or somewhere in between. I love her. I've got two children. I wouldn't want to hurt her in any serious way. You punched her so hard you wanted her dead or seriously, seriously injured. That's not true. Talking about pleading guilty to her death December the 9th, accepted he'd killed her. Charlie Booth said at that point it was all down to him. 
When did you first realise it was all down to you? I started to accept when I received the pathologist report. Before then, I didn't want to believe my punch caused Lauren's injury. You know, it's a lot to accept in your head. First interview. Knew she was dead. Knew he was arrested on suspicion of murder. Knew he had assaulted her. Charlie Booth said he didn't know in the first interview he was responsible. Looking at the first interview now, 11.37am July the 25th. You knew Lauren Howe was dead. You were arrested for her murder and you assaulted her and immediately after your assault on her, she was going grey. Her lips were blue. There was a problem. She'd taken a turn, yeah. That's one way of putting it. Line that begins. What I mean, and talking about her having been at a party or away, the end of that line, if they really cared about her, they wouldn't have let her walk home all that way. They'd have got in touch with me and picked her up. I'd have got her home safely and she'd still be here. She'd still be here? Yeah. How do you feel now? I was in panic. I was in shock. I just lost the love of my life. I had two children left. I was feeling lots of things. I should have been more truthful from the beginning. It's a bit more than that, Charlie Booth. She'll still be here. She'll still be here. Where are you going with this? What did you mean by that? I was just coming out with things. I was shocked. I was panicking. I'd never been in that position before. I was just coming out with things. Were you trying to keep the police off your back? I was panicking. I was in shock. I was just coming out with all sorts, you know. What other reasons could there be for coming out with that? I don't know why I said that. At that time in this interview, I didn't know what had caused Lauren's death. It crossed my mind the punch I thrown could have had something to do with it, but I had no information at that time. Were you trying to keep the police off your back? No, I was panicking. I was coming out with all sorts. If I was trying to keep police off my back, I'd have just said nothing. In my mind, that's what I wanted to believe at the time. Were you used to lying to the police? No. Earlier that night, you called police 999. Charlie Booth mentioning there was an altercation, playing that call now. Was it an emergency? No, but I wasn't fair at that time. Had someone set about you outside the co-op? No, a small altercation. That was a lie. Who played again? You told the operator you'd been assaulted. Is that true? No. You told the operator, do you need an ambulance? You said you were bleeding. Was that true? Charlie Booth, not sure he answered. Nicholas Lumley reading out, he said he was bleeding a little bit. Was that true? No. Mention him saying he'd been assaulted. Was that true? No. Cool played again. Mention him walking to cash machine and kicked in the ribs. Lies. It wasn't the truth. To a 999 operator. First police interview again. Soon as she got up her steps and seen the state of the house, you know what I mean, then after a bit of altercation in the hallway, I got her off me. Is that the truth? The whole truth and nothing but the truth? No, it weren't. Your reply. Well, she's grabbing me round my hair. She's kicking me in balls. I think we're grappling a bit. Then I've pushed her off. Terrible lie, Charlie Booth. It wasn't the complete truth, no. Talking about Charlie Booth saying he pushed her off open palm. Police asked to confirm and he said yes. As cool as you like. I wasn't telling the whole truth at that point. Question about pushing her and palming her away. Have you struck her at any point? Did you understand that question? Yeah. Hit her, said the police. Then you were silent. What did you say? No. You did know you were there to do your best, to help police, didn't you? No. Had you had that point forgotten, you hit Lauren Howe so hard? No. Were you trying to save your own skin? No, I didn't want to believe I held any responsibility for Lauren's death. But at this stage, I'd not been told what the cause of the injury was, so I didn't know. I don't know. I can't turn back time and say what I should have said or would have done. Talking about Charlie Booth saying in an interview that Lauren had hit him. This is the woman you kept telling us and police you loved. I do love her. You'd not admitted to what you'd done. I'd not owned up to my behaviours, no. Happy to say what she had done. Yeah, I said what she'd done. How aggressive was she being, said the policewoman. Would you mind reading out your response? Very, very, very aggressive and volatile. One more, actually. Standing there now, how do you feel about what you said? She was being aggressive and volatile. What about you? Yeah, I was matching that aggression. That's funny because, question, did you match her aggression? No, I was trying to contain it, trying to stop getting hurt at the time. I wasn't telling the whole truth at the time. Did you match her aggression? No, no, no. At any time, did you punch her? Pretty clear question, would you agree? Yeah. Why weren't you honest with police? 
I was panicking at this stage. At any time, have you used any weapons? No. Charlie Booth, what did you use to smash up the flat? My hands. Did you use a weapon? No. Looking in the jury bundle. What's that we can see by the sofa? A cricket bat. Why did you have a cricket bat? It's been hanging around the house. We used to go outside and play with the kids with it. It suits you to say the flat was smashed when you were alone, but you were there when that happened. No, she wasn't. Do you remember saying to someone while Lauren Howe was out cold, we've had an argument, the flats got smashed up? I didn't say that. I told PT I'd smashed the flower. Was she cowering when you smashed up the coffee table? I'd done all that before Lauren was there. Was she trying to get away from you? She wasn't present when I smashed the flower. Did she try to get out the window? No. The window handle came off. That's been off for a while. Nicholas Lumley mentioned police found the handle on the floor. Charlie Booth said it was from the kids' bedroom. Keep it off so they can't open the window. Did you use that bat to assault her? No interview again. Charlie Booth, as we begin, this was completely different, wasn't it? No, it wasn't. You had never hit her like this before. I'd hit Lauren before, like I say. I can't put a gauge on how hard I've hit her. She'd never gone pale, blue, lifeless, had she? No, it was one punch. I didn't intend to cause Lauren any serious harm. I just threw a punch. I didn't think. Police interviewed Charlie Booth saying, scrap, went on for five or six minutes saying they got into bed after and it just stopped. Do you agree that's a grotesque thing to say? What do you mean by that? Outrageous. I wasn't thinking straight. I was panicking. I was in shock. She wasn't alright, was she, after you delivered that blow to her tummy? No, she wasn't, but I can only vow I didn't know straight away. Charlie Booth saying he didn't see Lauren get into bed. He was on the balcony. Charlie Booth saying he didn't lay down next to her. He came in after he'd been on the balcony, mentioning Odin. I'm sorry, Charlie Booth. Her exact words. She said no such thing, did she? I'm sure she said that at the time and her behaviour was indicating. Asking for sugar, asking for something cold, some water. Another lie. No, not a lie. I'm pretty sure that's what she said. Here you are, telling police you're not sure how Lauren Howe ended up in a Bradford mortuary. I'm not telling the truth in these interviews. I was panicking. I was in shock. You've been sitting there for an hour and a half by then. Question. Is there anything? Is there anything you've done to her that you could have caused her death? You answer, no. Not in my view. It was no different to any other scrap we have. Another lie, Charlie Booth. I wasn't telling the truth. We always used to fight like that. It wasn't unusual. Talking about police saying they would await a post-mortem. Charlie Booth mentioning the toxology reports and drugs in system. In my mind, I still am thinking it was to do with drugs. Who were you trying to kid? I wasn't trying to kid anyone. Nicholas Lumley saying Charlie Booth could have stayed silent, but he spoke. Asked if he lied, Charlie Booth says he didn't tell the truth. Are you agreeing with me? I lied, yes. Second interview about seven hours later, in the meantime sitting in his cell. Thinking about what you had said. I wasn't practically thinking about what I had said. Said about it sinking in Lauren had died. Thinking about what you had done to her. A lot was crossing my mind. Thinking about doing the right thing by her. You had had time with your solicitor to discuss the general findings of the pathologist. That's why the officer said they were there. Talking about Charlie Boo saying they fell onto the bureau at one point. Never intended for anything to happen and he hasn't done this. A lie? I wasn't lying about falling onto the bureau. Do you have a problem saying the word lie? No, I was lying. A lot of this part talking about bumping into and around the bureau. More lies. Yep. Charlie Booth in interview talking about being more or less on top of her grappling. Her trying to claw his eyes, him biting her thumb, Lauren getting into bed, Charlie Booth getting undressed and getting into bed. Total lie. No, she didn't try to claw me in the eye and I didn't bite her thumb. Was that the trigger for smashing her in the stomach? Nothing triggered me. I didn't think. I just threw a punch. What brought it to a stop? Was your smashing her in the stomach, wasn't it? I punched her in the stomach and that's one of the things that brought it to a stop. All this flannel about the bureau, trying to insinate it could have been that or collapsing at home. Were you trying to convince there might be an innocent explanation? I was scared at this point. Obviously I was aware of what the injury was and quite possibly I had caused it. Repeats the question three times. Were you trying to convince police that was an innocent explanation for this? I suppose you could say that, yeah. 
police talking about doctor explaining 1.5 litres in abdominal cavity. Then from Charlie Boot, if she'd have got to the hospital earlier, could they have done out to her? Could, would they? Could they have saved her? I said that, yeah. As you sat there, Charlie Booth, did you know there was only one thing that could have saved her? That was you punching her to death. I didn't punch her to death, I threw one punch. Do you think you could have saved her? If when you pulled her arm or leg back, you didn't then direct at her abdomen? I didn't think about where I was punching, I just threw it. Details of laceration coming from false to the front. Extreme false. Something similar to an extremely hard punch to the stomach. Couldn't have been clearer, could it? The officer's there telling you about it. Describing it, yeah. And you still sat there and told lies? Yeah, I didn't tell the truth. Did you hit her with a punch? Yeah, I replied no. The point may be, you didn't want to believe what you did. I didn't want to, no. Haven't been handing heavy blows. At the most, you know, I probably grabbed her hand. That's true, I did grab her hands. And the first three words of that sentence... At the most, were you there explaining how she got bruises to her hands? I did grab her hands. Did she defend herself against your violence? Lauren never had her hands up and I was never handing out heavy blows. You were the only person who could tell police that happened, weren't you? Yes. There could be no more arguments between you and Lauren Howe. She was dead. Yes. All you could do right by her was tell the police. I should have told the truth from the beginning. Did you choose to protect yourself? I chose not to believe I was responsible for it. But your response was to tell lies by what you had done and make her out to be the aggressor. I wasn't honest. I should have told the truth about what I'd done. I was panicking. I was scared. Regular fights and violence in the days and weeks leading up to the incident. In the weeks and days up to this, had you been told about Oliver Kenny? I've been told that. There had been rumours for years like that. Spreading rumours for years, but they weren't true. I just want to make it clear, Oliver had been spreading those rumours for years and it was nonsense. Charlie Booth said he knew where Oliver lived, knew her partner had her number. Charlie Booth doesn't remember calling her that night. In the days and weeks running up to the incident. Did you worry it might be true about Lauren Howe and Oliver Kenny? No, I knew it was nonsense. Jason Bass mentioned Charlie Booth saying he wasn't good friends, just a drug associate. Charlie going to Jason's to smoke crack and then Jason and Charlie parting company. Charlie said no problem between them. I think he was saying you were still going on about Oliver Kenny that night. I wasn't going, going on, on about, about Oliver, Oliver Kenny. Thank you for supporting the channel and we hope you like the content. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe.